to introduce our next keynote speaker. Uh, uh, as you can see, Dr. Kyung Hee or KH or K Kim. Uh, she's a professor and researcher at William and Mary, as well as an inventor with two biomedical technology US patents. And she's a best selling author, including the Creativity Challenge in the US uh, A and 2016, Education for the Future in Korea 2019, and Let Them Play Outside the Box, also uh, in Korea. Uh, she believes everyone can be an innovator using creative uh, thinking skills. Uh, she comes from humble beginnings and origin on a farm in Korea uh, that kind of proves that point. Uh, her life's work promotes creativity and creative thinking skills of mastery, imagination, and critical thinking as antidotes to creative killing social conformity and test-centric uh, community. She began uh, studying under the uh, the work of the father of creativity, Paul Torrance, and she won the Berlin Award in 2009 from the American uh, Psychological Association and the Hollingworth Award for the Stop Award in 2011 and the Torrance Award in 2015 for the National Association for Gifted Children. Um, she's become one of the foremost experts on communication and uh, her creativity quotient assessment uses uh, eye tracking uh, patterns uh, that she has. Media and government leaders frequently seek her interviews, speaking engagement, passionate and uh, methodologies of her life's work. And Dr. Kim, uh, the, the floor is yours. Hello. Yes, my first name is Kyung Hee, but nobody can remember my first name, so I can go by K or KH. But uh, my last name, last name is Kim, so I don't want you to call me Kim. I wanted to ask, uh, answer a question, uh, has Guilford grown U.S. creativity? Uh oh, it doesn't go next slide. Oh, yeah. Okay, Guilford said innovation. Of course, he didn't use the word innovation. He said creative uh, productivity. Okay, I use innovation. Innovation comes from first, knowledge and experiences at first. Okay? But it's not related to IQ or test scores. Also, memorization of facts is not really helpful. Second one, Creative attitude. Creative attitudes are like all those um, characteristics that innovators uh, share, like uh, attitude, yeah, uh, personality. He calls it personality, like interest, motivation, uh, and the temperament like that. So I, in my book, I identify the twenty-seven attitudes. Okay, the first one. Okay. So he urged us to discover and promote creative attitude. The first one is a nonconformity. Okay? Uh, in order to make something new, you need to uh, be willing to uh, challenge the status quo. So make a new rule, right? So instead of following old rules, and it is actually uh, innovation is healing the world instead of fitting in the world. So, the first step to be creative is a mastery. It means a master of a, a topic of your interest by following rules. And then, like about you know, for uh, ten years, and then like while you are uh, mastering the subject, you noticed some needs or some problem in the topic. And then, so you want to solve it. Then it's a new problem, so you can't get an answer from existing knowledge and skills. So you use imagination by make, uh, breaking rules. So, okay, so you improve the existing one and then you solve a problem, so it's like a failure. And then, like imagination, you find a new way of doing something, a new idea, it's novel. So, Valuableness and novelness combined together becomes innovation. Is it new, making new rules? Yeah. History of Gilford's dream. In 1950, he shared the dream that he, we should develop not just intelligence. And then, so in 1957, 
actually, uh, there was a Soviet Union Sputnik. The American people scared. And then so they thought they were far behind the, the Soviet Union. So, um, but actually it helps, it helped the um, US uh, creativity development. So um, they started uh, focusing on science and then and also they uh, focus on uh, making learning fun. Okay, so developing creativity uh, following Dr. Gilpold's dream. And then 1960s and 70s, realizing his dream by focusing on American creativity. That is, that is American strength. America's strength is creativity. Okay. And then 1980s, okay, there were a lot of Japanese cars and the electronics came to America, and then so it scared people. And then, so, and, and then, what is the old people say? Well, the Japanese are coming, Japanese are coming. Before, they said the Russians are coming. And then now, you know, um, Chinese are coming, people say. But next, uh, they will say Koreans are coming because I am from Korea. And my book, my two books became bestsellers. So it's, I, I am changing Korean education. So it's a Koreans coming. 1990s in America, they made uh, this uh, law, it's a gold 2000, and then no child left behind. So then so they really focus on what well, testing, testing, test centric, okay? So it's no child gets ahead. 2000, OECD made a, a PISA program for international student assessment. Uh, 2000, so every three years, a 15 year old student take the um, test reading, science, and math. Okay, and then so every three years, uh, people like uh, countries don't really care about the score, they care about the country ranking. Okay, like what rank is uh, so whenever your uh, PISA uh, ranks uh, uh, come out, the whole world became panic. Like, uh, why? Because all those are Asian country students. Asian countries are top of rank. And then America is really very behind, right? So what happened was, uh, since the 1990s up to present, killing Dr. Gilford's dream by focusing on weakness. What is it? American people's weakness is what? Test scores. So, they are, uh, instead of they are focusing on their strengths, which is creativity, then now they are focusing on test scores so that they can be like uh, Asian, Asian countries, but they, this which is um, American weakness. The Dr. Torres said, if we are focused on weakness, you become average, average, right? So you have to focus on your strength. So a lot of you know, so my study, Creative Crisis in America, was on Newsweek, uh, July 2000. So it, I will talk about Creative Crisis soon. But And then 2016, I, I published the book, Creative Challenge. But see, the book, the name of the book is Creative Challenge, but a lot of people think it's a Creative Crisis because I am well known for Creative Crisis. So anyway, I. Uh, developed this uh, um, book, um, so it means I developed a theory how to develop creativity, especially creative attitude. And then, uh, so as a solution to creative crisis. Now, this is a creative crisis study. Look at this, the fluency is uh, like generating many, many ideas, many ideas, exploding a lot of ideas and generating many ideas. And the originality is the quality of ideas. It means like, uh, how unusual, unique ideas, right? So if you look at it, uh, like uh, 1957, it's a coming, uh, like uh, increasing. And then between 1990 and the 1998, somehow decreasing. I'm talking fluency, right? And then if you look at originality, it's up to 1990s, it's increasing, but like uh, not really a lot, of, not, uh, a oh, little, a lot of decreasing afterwards, right? It's uh, somehow a little bit, 2008, a little bit like uh, higher. I used the Torrance test for this. Okay, and then I recently uh, finished uh, like uh, this updated 
the study. Um, that they, I found the originality finally catch up, caught up, and then originality decreased as much as uh, like right now. So between tw 2008 and uh, 2017, it really declined a lot originality. So Dr. Guilford said to pro uh, promote creative attitudes, right? So and then the first one is non-conformity, the second was curiosity. So we need to encourage curiosity so that we explore many ideas. So that's a fluency. So if we generate a lot of ideas, it becomes really, you, if you have a lot of ideas, then some of them are quality ideas. Some of them are really unique ideas, right? So, so fluency eventually become originality. That's why the fluency declined first and then originality declined later. Okay. Before the 90s, children playing outside explored the nature, right? Now, working. The, a six-year-old boy answered, like when we <laughs> to ask, the, why are you doing this? He has answered like this, to get a job later. That's how he answered. Yeah. But without Gifford, America could have been worse. Why? Despite lower test uh, support, American students lower test scores, creative productivity and attitude are still higher. I will show you here. Okay, this is okay. The gray color is uh, PISA science scores from 2015. And then the red ones, uh, I made the creative uh, attitude composite scores using the questionnaire, uh, like for parents, students, and teachers questionnaire. And then um, <clears throat> In 2015, there were a lot of questions about science learning. So that's what I used. And then look at this. Um, all the um, Asian students, the top country, the top ranking uh, country on PISA scored, right? And then, but their creative attitudes are really low, right? America is still high. So it's uh, then the uh, relation, correlation between the uh, PISA uh, science score, the creative edge is point, like minus 0.9, it's really strong, right? So Asian test scores, so we need to talk about Asian test scores, real world success. There is the illusion about like, Asian success, okay? Academic success, Asian highest in, highest in the world and the US. However, career ad advancement, the lowest of all racial groups in the US, with the lowest in technology, law, finance, government, and academics like a uh, you know, uh, college or university president. So it means they get a job, but they don't get promoted. For example, in technology, okay, it's a ratio of a professionals to managers and executives. So they get a job, but they don't become managers and executives. So uh, that means. And then in law, it's even worse. Ratio of a law firm associated to partners. So a lot of like uh, entry level lawyers, but they don't become like uh, partners. Asian strengths and weakness. Asian culture is a, so I study Confucianism, like Asian culture a lot. Okay? Uh, Asian culture, Confucianism, uh, is uh, like uh, it started uh, 2,500 uh, years ago. Confucius is a teaching of a daily life, daily life ethics. Another Asian culture too. Second one is this: test-centric meritocracy. It started uh, 2,000 years ago when China made a civil service to, uh, exam, the civil service test. Uh, the reason they started the, that test is like the first the standardized test in the world, standardized test in the world, right? But they started because when Su Dynasty took power illegally, and then so they become they they had power, and then so they were worried that the, all the radicals or young radicals, young ambitious men might uh, overthrow the emperor, right? So. They wanted to uh, uh, control the young radicals by so, so it means that they so the, the by making this test, um, all those young radicals, ambitious young radicals, uh, 
were focused on passing the test because once you pass this test, civil service test, you get money and power and everything. So and they were really focused on the so they become like really mm, obedient, right? So the strength is the hard work ethic. Okay, Asian people don't believe in inborn ability or genius like that. So we just work hard, hard, okay? Work, like work of ease. And the obedience, it's really good, right? Well, obedience to authorities, like, like that. So I left Korea in 2000 with just two children, young children. And then I came to America, right? So I was alone all the time. I have been alone. So and then many people have been telling me, Dr. Kim, you have to have a balance in your life. You have to date, you have to marry. And then, so finally I signed up with match.com, which is the online dating site. So and then I put my profile there and I wanted to get, so I wrote there, I want to get these creative people, like right? men who, who have a creative attitude. But so a lot of men and contacted me, I met them. But they wanted to date me, not because I'm beautiful, but because they thought I'm obedient and submissive. But I, I don't think I am, you know, do you think I am? Anyway, <laughs> so, so it didn't work. So it did. Weakness, test-centric meritocracy, right? It's like rote learning because at the time, the test, the civil service test is like all, memorizing the what is a great people's words memorizing and copying okay and then so you know copy is so asian country um, uh, companies are really good at copying western companies products and then they improve right they make money like that and then conforming answers there are right answer right there are right answers so it's, it's uh, the same answers so conforming mind okay so i describe uh, asian as uh, this uh, with a uh, bonsai, you know, this, this is a uh, bonsai apple trees. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, the small apple, not many apples, right? And then Western innovation I uh, describe is uh, um, apples outside, apple trees outside, okay? So um, I, I use this metaphor often because I grew up on apple orchard, okay? My, my parents grew apples. Mm -hmm. then, so I was, uh, uh, when I was a little, I was wild, I was like a boy. But as I grew up, uh, I noticed this conformity, okay? I was supposed to be like a uh, really um, girl like that. Anyway, so, um, and then, but um, when, for example, when I was, a, when I became an English teacher, I was a high school English teacher. And I wanted to motivate my students to study English better. And, but and then so I taught them um, like American pop songs or British or Western pop songs, and also when weather is nice, we went outside, we danced, and then we did the aerobic uh, to the dance music. Yeah, and then my um, principal and vice principal gave me the lowest teacher rating ever. Yeah? And then also when I was in PhD, I, I was in PhD pro program in Korea also. In PhD program, um, I disagreed with uh, one of my professors and then he made me repeat one more entire semester. So I paid for one more semester, I had to do one more semester. So it was painful, okay? So it's uh, there, it's a, uh, you need to have just the same answer. You have to just uh, listen to what professors say, what teachers say. So your mind is really constrained. Okay, bonsai looks good, right? It's pretty, but it can't grow really, grow really big. Your mind is really constrained. But if you are outside the open field, then you get a lot of open ideas. You get a lot of fruits, right? Okay, so and then since I and uh, 20 years ago I came to US with my two children, and then I become like a fruit girl and I became successful. Yeah, to renew Dr. Kimbo's dream, we need to focus on curiosity for mastery. Okay, instead of teaching, so we should not focus on teaching. We have to focus on fun introduction to learning and reading, so that. Children are interested in the topic and they enjoy the topic. Then, once then, that they become really passionate. So we don't have to 
ask them to study, then they will do it, right? And then another thing is uh, instead of rote learning, because a lot of teachers are focused on teaching to the test right now, we need to focus on real life applications, okay? So without this, uh, without real life applications, you, you, the knowledge become disappear, the knowledge disappears as soon as you take the exam, okay? So um, with this like a curiosity and the passion for your topic, without this passion for your topic, there's no Nobel Prize winners. I have studied Nobel Prize winners a lot. I will give you an example, okay. These are uh, the, of course, the gray ones are uh, um, science scores and the red ones are what? So uh, interesting, which means this, okay. All these Asian country students have a top scores, high scores, but when they were asked, so they were not curious about the topic, they were not interested in learning the topic, or they don't enjoy learning the topic. So it's a, it is a, so the correlation is a minus 0.77, okay? Another one, yeah. So uh, another one, to renew the uh, Gilford's dream, non-conformity. Okay? We have to focus on non-conformity for imagination. Instead of compliance, uh, listening to teachers, we, we need to teach children to question and debate. Then challenge the status quo, rules and authorities. It's, it's, uh, instead of just accepting the knowledge, we need to challenge it. Then form your own opinion based on evidence. Don't be peer pressured. Focus on your strengths. It's the same. When country like America is focused on weakness, which is a test scores, they lose their strengths, they become nothing, right? It's a, for individual, it's the same. When you are focused on your strengths, you become like really, you become passionate about it. And then later you can work with, or I call it cross, cross pollinate. You can work with other people who have strengths that are your weaknesses. So you work together. Innovation is working together. Okay. So this is a look at this. Hmm. Um, uh, Korea, look at this, I am from Korea. <laughs> Look at the non-conformity. Non-conformity, the really, really. So it means it's a conforming society. You have to look the same. You have to act, act the same. You have to behave the same, right? So and then um, look at this. Uh, and then these uh, red one. It's the non-conformity. But I don't understand why UK <laughs> has a really low non-conformity. I don't know um, what's really? going on. That's I will really study. I will study next time I will present why UK is like that. But maybe I don't know but for well, I was thinking that maybe they wear or school uniforms. I found that school uniforms uh, are not good for creativity because it really forces the conformity. I don't know. So if I know for sure I will let you know. Anyway so the Correlation between like the PISA uh, science scores and non-conformity is a minus 0.75, okay? So, to renew Dr. Gilford's dream, let them explore. Instead of uh, growing bonsai, we need